And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy more, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come upon the four winds, O breath, and breathe, breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I have prophesied to them as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 130. Let us read it together. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is, what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading is from Romans 8. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you... Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life. Because of righteousness, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. 
Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of, glory, of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through Je though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. 
Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Mary of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I want to begin by saying a couple of things about the lessons we heard this morning. First of all, we hear the prophet Ezekiel seeing God raise dry bones into new life. He has a vision of God's ability to bring life out of death. He has a vision of God's creative power, God's renewing power, God's ability to make life new again. In the Gospel we hear about Jesus bringing Lazarus back from the dead. We hear that he is in no hurry to do what he knows he can do and what God will do through him. After four days, he goes to Lazarus, and Lazarus is raised from the dead. Again, the message is that God brings life out of death. God is the creative power in our world that makes things new. God is constantly at work in his creation to renew life, to bring life out of death. We are in the midst of a terrible, tragic situation. There are people dying around us. We don't know how this pandemic, how this virus may affect each of us. We are hopeful, we are fearful, we do not know what is ahead. We can only hope that this scourge will end and that we will once again be able to return to a normal life. But in the midst of this moment, we cry for those who have died and we hope that not many more will join them. You may want to ask, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You may wonder where God is in all this. Where is God in the midst of our turmoil, our fear? Where is God in this world? We, we need to remember that God has endowed us with free will. If we think back to the story of the Garden of Eden, which is not truth, but is a fable, a an idea, a story which is designed to carry the truth. If we think back to that story, we'll remember that Adam and Eve had free will, that God said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He has endowed us with the ability to think for ourselves, to make choices as he makes choices. And one of the choices he hopes that we make is to love him and to follow his commandments. Along with this endowment of free will comes an incredible ability to discover things in our world. We have discovered so many wonderful things and we will discover a cure for this virus. It will happen eventually because of the endowed spirit that God has given us to make things new, to be able to, and to overcome the challenges that this world can present to us. We will succeed. The other thing that we need to remember is that God over and over again in the Bible and through the words of Jesus Christ calls us to form a relationship with him. He lets us sin. He allows us to wander down the path of evil and sin. And when we finally come to the realization 
that that path leads nowhere but to death, we find He is there. And we turn to Him and ask for forgiveness. And He always forgives us if we ask. He always fills us with His Spirit if we ask. He always guides us if we ask. The point is that if we remember His two commandments, we can overcome evil and we can take, advantages, take advantage of the many endowments that He has given us through creation. God asks us to love Him with our whole heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is the path to life. This is the path to work with God and be with God while He makes His creation new and brings life out of death. Maybe out of all this will come a realization on all of our parts that we are one people, that we are one world. That world that I grew up in with just people living in smaller communities, people not traveling very much, people not knowing much about places outside their own little neighborhoods. That world no longer exists. Now our neighbors are Indians, Chinese, South Americans, Africans. We are all tied together in this world. Because of technology and the growth of the world, we are all tied together. And maybe, just maybe, out of this tragic moment, will come the realization on more of our parts that we should love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. This is our hope. This is the promise that God gives to us. The promise that He has given to us since the beginning of time, since He created the world out of nothing. We have the power to survive, to live in hope, to live in safety, when we work together with one another and when we use our powers of faith to do what God has commanded us to do. Let us hope that we have a new revelation, that we have a new understanding of who our neighbors are, and that we can work together to overcome this pandemic and to build a new creation with God as our spiritual leader. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to survive in this time of death and destruction. Help us to see that you are with us no matter how lonely, frightened we may be. Help us to see that you are always with us and that our better days are ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the judge and living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. God the Father, have, have mercy on us. God the Son, have, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have, have mercy on us. us. Holy Trinity, one God, have, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, we come to you in this time of anxiety and uncertainty surrounding the outbreak of COVID-19. As the sorrows of our heart and mind increase, we beseech you to save us from all trouble and fear. Cast away all works of darkness. Be our rock, a castle to keep us safe. For the Lord is our stronghold and sure defense, and he will be our Savior. For all who have died, receive them into the arms of your mercy. Grant them eternal peace, and surround those who mourn with your healing grace. For those directly infected with the virus, help them recover in good health and restore them in body, mind, and spirit. For those at high risk of infection, especially the elderly, those with underlying illnesses, the marginalized, and the poor, keep them healthy and free from all sickness. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in quarantine, the shut-in, and the infirm, help them find peace. Keep them in good health and renew their mind and spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. For all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, protect them as they minister to the sick. Relieve all stress and provide the resources and space to meet the needs of all the infirm. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, guard them from all harm and grant them strength and courage as they respond to all calls for help. Lord, hear our prayer. For service industry workers and those forced to work as their community shuts down, keep them healthy. Bestow the resources to best care for themselves and their families, and assure them in times of financial and medical anxiety. Lord, hear our prayer. For those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources, have mercy on them. Alleviate any fear and provide for them daily bread and wage. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of this nation and the world, help them make sound and safe decisions to best secure the future of our planet. Lord, hear our prayer. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, as schools remain open, keep them healthy and in good spirit to learn. As schools close, Feed those who will go hungry without guaranteed meals and shelter, all students who have no place to live. Lord, hear our prayer. For all scientists and those working to find a cure, inspire them towards your truth and help them discover and disseminate a vaccine and cure. Lord, hear our prayer. For all media and journalists, protect them from all harm in their reporting and move them to be a vector of truth and certainty and never fear or panic. Lord, hear our prayer. For all places of worship, embolden them to be beacons of hope and love and help us to gather however and wherever we can, be it in person or online, to give you praise. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our church, help them minister to their flock, fortify them to be faithful pastors, to persevere in prayer and to build up the family of God in new and creative ways. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young, spare them from harm and fear and keep them a joyful sign of your love and light. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, 
Build in them strength and fortitude for the time ahead, and give them the words and witness to be wise counselors and compassionate caregivers. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For calm amidst the storm, as the waves toss our boat and we wonder, do you not care? Remind us to not be afraid, that with you all things are possible, and that even the wind and sea obey you. Lord, hear our prayer. Stir up in us a spirit of compassion and tenacity for the time ahead. Amen. Move us to check in with loved ones at high risk of infection and those in quarantine. Amen. Ease our fear and anxiety, that we may share our resources rather than hoard them and extend a helping hand to those in need. Amen. Amen. Inspire us to share the good news of your love and hope. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, healer of the sick, ruler of the tempestuous sea, and Savior of the world. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may do in your will and walk in your name. To the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Let us pray together the words that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us, us as living members of your Son, Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you, you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. heart through Christ our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
Alleluia, alleluia, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 